Welcome to TGIF. Here we are, Exodus episode three. We are on chapter 15, talking about 15 through 19 today. What chapter are you on? Don't forget, you can go back and watch the first two episodes, get on board with us. You still can go back and catch up on Genesis if you want to travel through the Bible with you. Today's passage that we are going to be talking through is all, it's pretty familiar because it's something we do mm, each and every day, and that is? Complain. No. I think I was complaining when I got here to meet you in the studio today. It, I, I think we complain, and we don't even realize we're complaining because it's just built into our nature like that we have this right. I'm not happy, so I'm just going to complain. Right, right. And was that look, what was happening? Yes, and when we look at Scripture, it's all over the place. And so we're looking today at Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 and 3. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill us. This whole assembly with hunger. Wow, that's heavy. And I think when we, when we think about complaining, that's probably a story, if you're familiar with the Bible, that's probably one that you, 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 you know and you've heard. But it wasn't the first time they complained. Because if we go back to the beginning of our section we're kind of looking at, in chapter 15, there's a piece as well where they were thirsty and they were demanding water. Same kind of complaint. What have you done? Well, you got us, you know, why, why, why? And so in 1524, that's where the, the demand, it's really a demand for water comes in, complaining about where they are. And then for chapter 15, verse 26, if you will listen, I am the Lord who heals you. And so I love that response because I think sometimes we just want our complaint solved mm. rather than really looking at the bigger picture that God is trying to heal us. Mm. I mean, we are not perfect people. We've yeah. never claimed to be, and we fall into the complaining as well. Mm -hmm. But sometimes even when God answers, we forget to acknowledge that, you know, God's trying to heal me. I have this brokenness. I have this broken part of me, and part of that is how I complain. So, you know, thinking about how we complain, the way we complain mm -hmm. is important. They're going to travel on. Mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, after this blessing, having received the water, they're going to travel on to the, a beautiful place. There's 12 springs. There's 70 palms. I mean, they're, okay, this is good again, all right? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -mm. Not so much, because that's where we just started our scripture. Right, 16, 4. I will test them to see if they will follow my direction. Yeah. Will they follow my direction? Again, leaning back into the, the 15, chapter 15, trying to get a picture that I am the Lord that heals you. You've got to follow me, though. You mm -hmm. need to follow me. And so that's where that 16 verse 4 comes in. I will test them to see. Mm -hmm. But 16.7 is interesting to me because sometimes I think we wonder. We really wonder. He has heard your complaining against the Lord. Yeah. Complaining against the Lord, do we do that? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we think, well, I'm complaining because I don't like what you did. Right or what he did, or what was done to me. Mm -hmm. But are, are we sometimes complaining to the Lord and not realizing it? Maybe because we're not getting our way the way we want? I mean, they thought they were complaining to Moses and Aaron. Right. Really, it's their complaint against God. The God that rescued them out of Israel. Mm -hmm. And here they are. Yeah, I think wow. we fall into those same places today. But, yeah, it really, we default to it, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of our default mechanism rather than saying, okay, God, I need your solution here. My brain capacity only thinks of one thing. I want to complain right now. Mm. So what, what kind of solution can you put in my brain? Can you put inside me? And it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier too, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, you know, that whole idea of the fruit of the Spirit. If you have the fruit of the Spirit mm -hmm. is in you, then that's what you're tapping is the Spirit in you. You know, trouble comes and we look. We look to complain, right? Oh, yeah. We're pretty good. I mean, there are companies that pay millions of dollars a year to have somebody handle all the complaints that come through. Like, who wants to sign up to hear, to hear all the complaints? Mm -hmm. 
And because a lot of times, I mean, you're not going to win. That person is mad and you're not going to get them to to understand what you're trying to get across to them. But I mean, compl it's it's all around us. I even think like the Facebook and all the complaints. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine just having a company that has to follow up on all those too? Like mm -hmm. Amazon, mm -hmm. they're not all five star ratings. And there's people that complain, and mm -hmm. they've got to get other people involved, and that's... And some of it, I mean, just part of life. We order something, and it's wrong. We're going to be upset when my food comes, and it has onions, and I ask for no onions. I'm going to say, you know, I really want this redone. So I, I think there's just maybe a way we can be better complainers, because if I order something and it's not right, I have a right to say, okay, I would like this corrected. Exactly. But I can do it in a kind way, mm -hmm. or in a not kind way. I mean, they were probably not having great kind conversation when they were complaining in the wilderness. Yeah, if you're in the wilderness and you're thirsty and hungry, mm -hmm. you want solution, you need it, mm -hmm. something right now. I think the question is though, who will listen to our complaints? Mm -hmm. Companies hire people to listen to complaints. I'm the pastor of the church. Mm. Part of my job is listening to complaints. I mean, that's a part of the job that goes with it. But how as Christians then, mm. uh, do we step into the places where we hear people really complaining about God, maybe even mm. about God? Are we afraid to step into those places and say, this is my experience with God, right. you know, seeking my solution with God rather than just spending every day complaining? I hear people all the time say, you know, I'm praying. God's not answering. God's not giving me direction. I don't know whether to take this job or to do this or make this huge decision. My life. God's not answering because we want answers and to hear from God in our time and on our timing. And a lot of times we already know what we want him to say. Yeah. So it's really easy to fall into that place when God says, I'm always at work. My slow to you is there's purpose in it because I need you to be to get to a new place with me before you can even receive what I have for you or the direction I'm going to send you next. Yeah, this is what I say. We're, they were hungry. And when I think about the world and starvation in the world, current, the current hunger mm -hmm. problem, that's a huge problem. And we have yet to be able to figure out how to solve that one. And the reality is, are we seeking God to, for the solutions? Because mm. there is excess. There's always excess in our food pantry, in your mm -hmm. food pantry. Remember that Centenary does uh, once a month. We collect food. Mm -hmm. Are you participating in that? I know there's some of you that are just dedicated to that, but maybe there's others that this is an opportunity for you to reassess. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people starving in the world, and maybe we're part of that solution. And I think it just, it's so big. It's so big. Well, I forgot to bring my canned foods to church this week, mm -hmm. uh, this month. Well, maybe next month, and then you forget again. And because you're thinking, well, it's not going to make a difference. If everybody did something, yeah, exactly. it makes a difference. We pray to God for solutions, and sometimes, you know, there, there's fast answers and slow answers and no answers. And we get caught up in the midst of all that. But I think when you look at uh, chapter 17 of our section here, verses 3 and 4, it talks about thirst again. And why are you trying to kill us? And you know, we go through this whole thing again. Mm -hmm. Here we are again, complaining about it. And they are really, they are really angry this time. So angry that they're ready to, you know, stone Moses. They're so mad. And the Lord again, test again. Everything is not a test, right? Mm -hmm. So everything that happens in the complaining department is not always a test. Mm -hmm. But here's a very good example of being tested over and over with really the same topics mm -hmm. and them not learning. And so I think God is really trying to help them and help us to learn um, what that trust looks like, and will we trust the Lord in all circumstances? I don't know. It gets even more complicated at the end of this section that we have in chapter 18, because guess what Moses' job was day and evening, through the day and then through the evening? He would sit there and listen to the complaints and come up with the solutions. Man, after a week of that, can you even imagine how tired you'd be? All of Israel, you know. And that's just a week. Yes. And he did a lot longer he than did a week. A lot longer. And so it was good that he had a father in law, Jethro, that come and said, Hey, here's what you need to do. You need mm -hmm. to take care of yourself. You need to be in relationship with God. And you need to bring bringing those messages to God to us and helping us. But you cannot handle all these complaints. You need to find leaders. You need to find people within mm -hmm. uh, our 
our group of people to help you with that. And so I think it's important that as Christians, we're helping mm -hmm. in that department too, that you know, not one person is doing is receiving all the complaints, but right. how do we help each other as the community of believers? I think that's that reminder why a community of faith and a, and a church family is so important mm -hmm. that you have people coming alongside you when you're going through hard times, that people can shed light on situations. You know, God uses different people yeah. to help others in ways that you don't really think about, well, wow, that person, I mean, hindsight, when you look back, mm -hmm. Ah, that person was in my life to help me or to be an example. Yeah. Like that person never really complained, huh? I wonder if I was supposed to, to, to glean from that that, you know, maybe I do complain a lot. I think we're hard to say that we are just like them. Mm. We're, wanting, we're wanting this. We're wanting that. We want it now. We go find people to complain to. We go talk about people. We go complain about people. I mean, we do the same thing. Are we taking those to God or just creating more drama in the big picture of everything. Mm -hmm. So the question we leave you with is, do you complain first or ask God first? You mean ask God first before complain? Wow. Didn't say complain to God. Right. Like maybe ask God, I'm struggling in this area. Please sh shed light or draw me closer to you or what are you trying to show me before we just go and complain. So that takes us through chapter 19. So if you want to get ahead on next week's reading, chapter 20 through 31, we'll get you ready for episode four next week. Make it a great week and we'll see you next time on TGIF. Bye.